Hey y'all, Super X here, guys and girls, and tonight, yeah, tonight, I know I said it was going to be a while, but I figured we'd have to knock this out, tonight we're going to be reviewing, or I'm not going to review it, I don't review stuff, I walk through stuff, and I build stuff, and I vape stuff, so tonight we're going to be looking at walking through the nothing. That there that you see in front of you is a nuppin. The nuppin is a um, stainless steel rebuildable atomizer. It's a pretty low profile stainless steel rebuildable atomizer too, if I may say so. It's I'm going to have to subtract a little here. It's only about 18 millimeters high. It's less than that. It's probably about 16 because with the base of this thing, am I right? 20 millimeters high? 20, it's 20 millimeters high, plus minus, okay? Pretty sweet looking little piece, isn't it? As you can see, it's got a dual AFC. The AFC um, openings, and I'm gonna, I've learned a lot from watching my boy Danny Brandt. I'm gonna do a Danny Brandt style where he tells you the size of the air holes and stuff. Now this, I could pull out my drawing that I helped P-Dib with. I, I made the drawing for this. This is a joint venture, I believe, between P-Dib and Val Healy, this atomizer. And I just happened to get one, and I was resistant to get one. But let me not jump ahead, but um, Val Healy, P-Dib brings it to you. Val Healy's back in there somewhere in the mix. I believe he's the guy down there in the Philippines making it happen. And all I did was make the drawing. So I could have referred to my drawing, but instead in Danny Brandt style, I measured stuff. So I measured that the diameter of this rebuildable atomizer is 18 millimeters and has two five millimeter by two millimeter air holes now Danny measures the um, 510 and stuff too but I'm not going to measure that this atomizer takes a 510 drip tip so let's let's have a little a little look at it if we will might from different vantage points as you could see a pretty what's the word I'm looking for for it it's just a nice looking stainless steel atomizer. Now you guys are gonna have to bear with me because I had to throw some hand lotion on. I was just cracking like crazy. So I'm trying to come behind and wipe off pretty dry on it right now. But if you see any fingerprints, it's because I have been, um, I've been lotioning up. So why don't we dissect this atomizer and look at it, look at the inside of it. It comes off relatively easy, the top. Not so easy, nothing, nothing turned. Now I had this atomizer vaping since last night. It was a really added, really, it's not the traditional atomizer to build, um, particularly even for a dual coil, but it wasn't like, oh my God, this is in incredibly challenging. It's probably not like the first time RBA person's atomizer. You might want to have one under your belt or, or so, but I'm not saying you couldn't master it, especially after watching this video and some tricks that P-Dib taught me. We're going to be doing one called the tweezer method tonight, but there you see it from the side. Um, we can circulate that around and give your perspective. One of the things you'll notice before we look at the, at the down straight on it, let's just look at the side of it first. Again, is that this the wire capture on the sides of this atomizer is done with these little Allen screws. You see them here? It's done with Allen screws. And then you've got your AFC cap. And um, like I said, it's a total of three piece atomizer. There's an AFC ring and cap, but it can be built in single coil mode. Let me wipe this off here a little bit for you. It can be built in single or dual coil mode, and you'll only have one air hole open because of this. As you can see, there's three slots. So you'd have a single coil slot here. You just put that in front of your coil, or if you're doing duels, there's two opposing slots. Again, stainless steel, pardon the fingerprints on it. And again, I think I was going into that I was vaping this thing, and it really sucked to have to tear this down to make this movie. Here's the ring. But I have another good atomizer to vape. I'm not, don't, don't you guys feel sorry for me. I'm not over here jonesing or anything, but 
I was really getting into this atomizer, and I'm going to tell you more about that in a moment. I'll let you guys start to admire the, um, as I'll tell you about it as I vape a little bit. I had a snake down in the basement again. I know. I need to stay out of here. What? My wife was not happy that I came down here. She said I'm an extremist, I think was her words. And she's right, I kind of am. I had no intentions of coming down and making a movie of this, but I figured now that I think that there's, I think there's 20 of these left, I think I just saw something on the, um, the little thing that Pete had put up, like a countdown thing, and it said 20. So, well, you guys just kind of take this whole deal in right here, take it in, take it in, in all of its glory, how it captures the wire. I'm just going to take a little couple pulls, because like I said, I just got down here, got everything set up. I'd like to have a little vape. I'd like to um, drink a little espresso because I don't think it would be right for me to build an atomizer without shaking like a leaf. What do you guys think? Would it look good for me in one of my videos to actually pull something off and look good at doing it? No. It just wouldn't be normal. It wouldn't be an X-Vid. Alright, so we are going to get into this now. One more just slug glug off of this. Okay, so you can see it's very symmetrical. It's got a whip. Now, I've ate this starting last night. I don't remember. Maybe it was around 11 o'clock. Into this morning. And the first thing I noticed... Oh, I forgot to mention. Let's pull the bottom off. This is a bottom-fed atomizer. I don't know if it would work on a dripper, but there's kind of the 510. Should we do a Danny Brand? No, I can't do a Danny Brand because my thing won't get up in there. It has, like, some extra space on it. But see, being bottom-fed... It has a hole in the bottom where juice flows up into. To me, one of the most noticeable, one of the most, the first thing you're going to notice about this atomizer, and you'll see when I get it built and slapping on a mod. Let me preface it by saying I've had every decent, rebuildable, bottom fed atomizer there has ever been made, including some that cost three times as much as this. This atomizer squonks and drains, hands down, no questions asked, better than any rebuildable atomizer I've ever had, any car, anything. It's the most insane squonking, draining, I mean, you squonk and it ought, just like, just the lightest press on the bottom, <sighs> thing fills and then it goes right back away. It's almost like, wow, what happened there? It's incredible. And as soon as I saw that feature, I, I, I called PDIP and ordered three more. Just like that. As soon as I saw the way it drained, I didn't call him. I um, emailed him, actually, and said, Peter, I need three more nubbins. Peter's my boy. He treated me really good. He always treats me good. He's never, ever taken advantage of me. He's always treated me like a friend. But that's not why I bought this atomizer. Now, if he was a total dickhead, I wouldn't have bought it, just on principle. But he's a cool dude, and this atomizer squonks and drains like no other. Now, the build is a little different. You have probably several, many different types of builds you can put into this thing. Let's get it up on its um, on its side again for the purposes of our, our... Well, let's not. Let's leave it there. But you got nice big... Here, I am going to do that because it's important to see this. This is stuff that you'll want to see. And lately I've been using this thing in my videos. And I know it takes me a little bit to kind of get it to where I want it. But as you can see through the center post, you got a big gaping hole there. Okay, you see that? That is a gaping hole. You can, I don't know you, what gauge wire you would be restricted by that times two, but it's huge. And then you've got a, then you've got these wire capture holes, which are served by these little little dealios here. You just loosen these up. I'm, I'm gonna put it down for that. Now, what I'm using here, just so you guys know, just remember that pin vise that I said I was gonna give a try to wrap coils on. Yeah, I think I could have wrapped a better coil around like a freaking wooden match stick. But, yeah, I did take P. Dibb's Allen wrench that he sent me. You know, it came with the Allen wrench. And, and the other thing he sends you is extra screws, too. Like three extra screws. If you're really cool, he might send you six. So I hacked off a piece of that and put it in this pin vise. It works very awesome. Now, I'll probably use the Allen wrench for like the high torque application right at the end. But for just getting the screws in and out... 
I took that Allen bit and I just super glued some foil to it. So last night it was spinning in here. Super glued some foil to it and also took some pliers and tightened down this cog. So if this is the only purpose that this pen vise ever serves, this good one is just to hold that bit. I was even going to just super glue it in. If necessary, I will. I'll just super glue it in there because I'm after I've squonked this Addy and vaped this Addy, I think this is probably going to be the only thing I'm really going to be rebuilding um, anymore. So, um, yeah, this, this thing might get super good in here. So, anyway, what else do you guys want to know about the nuppy nuppin' from the top? We'll set the pieces next to each other, and you can admire the... The coolness of them shattered my broken dreams. It's not in my everyday mix up. What I'll be throwing on top of this when I'm setting down is this Loki Lab router tip. Loki makes some killer products too. Um, a lot of people want these routers. I got a bunch of them when they first came out. And I don't use anything else. They kill and they look just amazingly insane on top of an up and my my opinion my opinion is my opinion and it is what it is but and they've been insanely insane inside the top cap of the nubbin you could see where the loki lab router goes into it there it's a small chambered deal most of it's consumed by the base of this atomizer there's not much left when you're done if you could see where the air holes are okay so that's the top of it and then obviously this afc ring it's going to slip around it so why don't we just go ahead and get it to that stage now so we're done with it the, the AFC turns really easily on it too I found well, if you grab it by the right part not the drip tip let's make sure we got it lined up right yep let me wipe off the fingerprints and why don't we get into slapping a build on this the tweezer build give me one second all right guys and girls I always forget the girls so after having built this last night I pulled out the coils and measured how long what I'm going to be putting on here is two, eight and a quarter, I guess you'd say, wrap tensioned micro coils. Um, and then I realized that um, this low, there's a, you're going to, you see, you've got to get a leg down into these holes on the side and one through the center post. No, no big challenge. One goes through the side, one goes through the center post. The tweezer method that PDIB taught me involves putting it through the center post first. For that, we'll J up the wire a little bit. I'm not on my needle yet because I got something else I got to do first. And then we've got this leg. So what what I'm kind of getting to here is you're going to have a coil that's about like that, okay? See the shape of that little thing? This part's going to go through the center post. This part's going to go down into this hole right there. What I've devised is a little jig to know how long that leg needs to be that goes down into that part because that was the biggest challenge to building this atomizer and the way I run it on my little jig is I put the coil on it now, I've never done this in front of the counter, it's only my second time building this Addy but it, uh, see how long, see I, when this leg is even when this leg is even with the leg on this Allen wrench right here I'm just gonna trim this and then I'll know it's exactly the right length trim that off Am I conveying that properly? Kind of tough with this camera here to convey that properly, but one leg, even with the bottom of that Allen, it's hard to even deploy the deal. But that's what I've come up with. Right there. So now that little leg that's sticking off there will be the exact length, I'm pretty sure. And we'll try it on this coil if we have to make adjustments. I'm not going to use this Allen thing to mount the coil but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the atomizer I'm going to loosen up all the screws on it okay we're going to start with these side screws and look down there and just see that they're they're loosened and they are that one is the top one I know already was yeah I went in Home Depot today and trying to find a 0 .0, 0.9 millimeter bit good luck I went on Amazon I didn't feel like buying a whole set of bits for one bit and I didn't see anything that cool so I decided that my pen vise was gonna have to do it like I said 
Otherwise, it would just sit in the drawer. I'm not like the type of dude that's going to drill little tiny pilot holes in anything. I just don't have anything to drill little tiny holes in. Now, all three of those are loose. So, I'll get my little white needle out here. My 17 gauge needle and I'll stick this 29 gauge coil on it. And I'm going to stick the center leg in first. This is a hell of a beautiful coil. Okay. So it's going in. And it probably goes in real easy for you guys. All right. This is the only thing that's different about building any other atomizer is that. And while it looks complex, like, wow, that's hard. I can promise you it's not really that hard. It's We've got a camera in between us. Try doing anything with a camera in between you, let alone trying to jab wire and holes. Here's where the tweezer comes in. You just grab your tweezer. And I think this leg might be a little long. I don't know. We'll see in a minute. I'm not worried. We've got wire cutters. Yeah. See, I'm skipping the part where I tweeze. I'm just getting like all freaky with it here. And I was also used to looking straight down on holding this thing in my hand. There we go. It's, I think I got it in there now. Now you're going to say to yourself, why does he have that coil like way over there? It's not going to end up anywhere near there when we're done. So what I'm going to do at this point is now I've got this in as deep as it'll go into this side hole. I'm just going to tighten down this Allen oh, screw. I want it to go all the way in this side hole. All the way. Tighten that down. Got a good bite on it. Like I said, You'll see it when the finished product is there, where it's going to go, and it's not going to be there. Okay. What I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to loosen this top one because I don't think I have it as loose as it could have, should have, would have been. I'm just going to pull it up tight to that for now. And kind of bend it up for a little placeholder. P-Dib's probably looking at me going, oh my god, dude, you are about an incompetent dude. But you'll see when it's said and done that it's pretty simple to build. And again, look at my coal now, laugh all you want, but wait till I get this thing finished. I'll be the one laughing here. Because it, it kills. So we got to go back to putting this on this little thing here. Again. And... Considering that you build a coil, if the, the, you rebuild an atomizer, what, on a good month? Once, maybe? On a bad month? Or if you get bored? What we're going to go through here is literally nothing to um, have a killer month's worth of vaping or beyond. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this leg even with the bottom of this Allen thing that gives you a pretty good reference as to wh how long that leg needs to be okay about like that feel free to fine tune now let's put it in J up the leg a little bit bring the nothing into the field of view it up a hair more get it over the lip pull that in get this up here look up over camera tilt so I could see get it down in the hole Bang. get these things this thing Again, I know it looks like, wow, that's crazy. It's not. It's not crazy at all. And all I'm going to do is tighten up the screw. It is crazy when you have your atomizer up on this ridiculous platform. You're not holding that little base in your hand or 
heaven on a mod yeah that's crazy and why I'm doing this this way is for you guys I'm I'm looking the fool for y'all I would have had this thing built five minutes ago or ten minutes ago if not for this stuff here okay so now I feel that I'm at a point where I could start to regain my dignity a little bit okay let's pull this needle out I don't really need to worry about it for the moment and let's just bring these in bring them in bring them in pretty close to the center of that post and right about now I'm gonna give these a little tighten again the coils are not gonna end up there okay don't anyone start getting scared and going why am I watching this dude he has no clue what he's doing well I don't really have any clue what I'm doing and I won't lie to you about that but this doesn't really take much of a clue bam okay so now that's there and that's there and I think we're at a point where we can you'll notice now there's no side leads to trim you only have to trim these center leads the side leads you've cut to be you've cut them to spec man I'm just taking these off here just taking this one off of here and now we will begin to position our coils where we want them symmetrically okay to do so I'm going to take this thing right here I'll push through here straighten it out and I'm gonna pull it out and push it over oh I saw Mike music had posted me a cool build he did too but I I, I saw that build by PDIB I did not dig having to bend the center post. I knew I would screw that up to bend that, to bend the center wire and um, try to get it in the center post bent. Mike, bro, you don't know me too well. I am, if you can't see by these videos that I'm not capable of anything that's that like advanced, man. I am a nerd, bro. I'm barely capable of this kind of stuff. But do you see how easy that was? You see how the coils initially looked like Oh my God, what is that guy doing? Because we're gonna use a bunch of tension and we're gonna move stuff around, it actually becomes quite easy. And my builds look, when I'm done, I thought my build was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Beautimous. Just doing my normal stuff here, guys. Playing around. At this point, I'm going to throw this on a mod because I like the stability of having it on a mod than on this thing. See you later thing. Goodbye to you. I'm not going to use you to measure resistance. Put you on this mod right here. Okay. I know that when I'm done that this is going to sit about like that. So now I can really start to get jiggy with my pulling this out. Pushing it over. And we'll have the height to deal with in a minute too. Are we starting to make sense here? Is that all starting to come together? Height the height of the dealio now what we'll do is we'll stick the AFC ring on and I'll probably just come in through here and just work that over a little bit work this one over too if I'm so inclined I think I got a unique way that I wick this too I'm gonna call it Santa's beard since it's like Christmas time I like the way I wicked it. I, I wicked it twice. I wicked it once, like the traditional way, like, like a piece in each coil. And then I thought of these scarves my kids wear, my wife wears, and they were picking them out. And she goes, oh, I don't like that kind of scarf. I like an infinity scarf. And it's like a big circle. So this really isn't an infinity. It doesn't go around in a big circle. But it's very close to it, and I'll show it to you. So what we want to do at this point is we want to take this AFC cap. So I'm going to pull this thing apart. And we want to make sure our coils are in line with the... AFC hole. As you can see, they're not really a hundred percent in line. They could come up a little bit. 
a little bit. So I'm going to bring them up a little bit. I'm going to do the same to this one. We want them all to match as much as possible. I guess, you know, there's always that variable that maybe you like a lot of throat hit and then you like not a lot of throat hit. You have one at one height and one at the other. But we find that, that these, I me, mean, when you see a coil right in your AFC like that, to me I find that that is optimum. I see the same thing on that side. Optimum. So let's resolve hot legs, look at it again in plan view. Let's just, we'll double check screws too. I know the side ones are pretty well jamming, but I'll check this one, it's good. We'll give the side ones a little, a little check. This is, putting this in this thing is just killer. Oh, something to make sure of too. Found this out last night. When you go to put the top cap on, you cannot have any of this screw protruding and not any of it I mean it has to be in and they're they're in as you could see but just say you had like a little bend in your wire or something and then one of these these side set screws is protruding your cap won't close good well it'll just hit on it you'll wonder what am I doing wrong okay so we're good there's no need and I don't I had these screws didn't back out come loose at all let's resolve the hot legs on this thing real quick then we'll get them all queued up and we'll um and we'll observe the squonking action. This will probably net in the 0.5 ohm range. Let's do our hot leg resolution. Grab a, well that's cooling off for a second. A little coffee. A little vapage. All right, now we remove our heart legs with our blowtorch. Just kidding. We're just gonna take our little needle, put him through, pull, pull towards you and run it through there. I mean, you guys gotta be pretty bored with my method of removing hot legs by now. I wish I'd had something as cool as like, blowtorch and squeeze it, fire it, squeeze it. But remember, that's pretty old. We just go like this now, and they go away. Let's see how, how we're doing on that now. Yeah, I'd say they're pretty well gone, wouldn't you? If you want to, you know, I'd say they're gone. I'd say those coils are lighting up pretty evenly, inside to out. I love how quick 29 gauge lights up. I like how quick it begins to cool down too. That's important. To me, it just uh, it lets the juice not caramelize nearly as much. So it's a heavier gauge that takes a little longer to heat up, a little longer to cool down. And that gives you a car coil caramelization, I believe, at a faster rate than if you didn't have such a heavy gauge, especially for 0.5 ohms. 28 gauge, pretty. That one drop in gauge makes a huge difference in the way things go down. Looking pretty good, right? All right. Looking pretty good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just level out my coils, looking at them. I mean, I got a tiny bit of a little bit of a hump right there. I'm not going to really obsess over that. I could probably pull on it a little bit more and make it go away. Um, I could. I could pull on it so much that I pulled the wire out of this hole over here. But is that really necessary? Let me go, rep let me repair that real quick off camera. Yeah, all right. We got that resolved, so let's do a little tightening in on the build now that I've got everything pretty much to a point where we're ready to um, wick it and vape it. Let's not miss out on something that's so cool about this atomizer and why I immediately, like I said, as soon as I put it on a mod, 
and squonked it. Now, I'm not sure where the juice comes from down there. I'm not, I haven't been able to investigate it. I could maybe pull out a drawing and see, but I'm not. I'm just telling you. Let's just look at the juice. Let's look where, let's do it. Let's do this here. Give me one second to play with my camera. Watch well, the way the juice comes out. It's like the freaking, it's incredible. See that? Is that the best? Now watch it go. Good day, sir. Nice to know you. That, there's no atomizer I've had that, that's even like done anything even remotely close to that. Watch, I'll do it again. Look at that. By now everything is like perfectly wet. And away it goes. Gone. Drains right down that hole. Now again, I don't I haven't looked closely enough to see where how it comes out of there. And I don't really care because it works so good. Is that something that's hard to get really enough of when you just do it once or twice? Let's do it a third time. What atomizer, especially of that size diameter, it's 18 millimeters, right? It's two millimeters bigger than a 14. Two millimeter, there you go. That is nice. And you don't have to have the perfect build in it. My coils are anything but perfect in there. I, I will probably just recheck the height now that I had to re-put that thing. And that wasn't that hard to do what I just did. I had to just, basically I just had to lift up a coil and push the leg back down and tighten it. It's because it's a little longer than the other one, but it's not enough where it's going to make a huge difference in it at all. They still light relatively evenly. I'm not freaked out by anything. What's a meter this build? If you guys don't mind, Let's see if we are right at about, I'm thinking about 0.5 on it. Let's throw the meter on it real quickly see if we still got two ohms of resistance in the leads or if some kind of gremlin came in last night and screwed with my good multimeter no see how sometimes gremlins will come in and screw with it it's the first time I've ever seen this multimeter jump Point two, okay. Remember, we are in a basement that's subject to temperature fluctuations here. I guess here, I guess anywhere is negative on it, right? There ain't no way. Let's put it on a hole. Yeah, there you go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this, and I'm gonna jab it in the hole. Point 0.8 minus two is point 0.6. 0.6 ohms, respectable 0.6 ohms. Now, we're gonna wick this thing. Let me show you, I mean, it's not rocket science how I've wicked it, but I like the way that I wicked it. And, it. and I'll show you why I like the way that I wicked it in just a moment. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some like alcohol and clean my hands of any hand lotion on it. So give me one second, right? All right. Okay, here we go. I make this look so hard, don't I? It's not hard. No mod movement, but pull it through all the way to there. That's the way that's going to go. Now we're going to take this piece of wick, and you might have to twist the tip a little tiny bit again. And then we're going to just throw it through this other side. That one piece, and let me show you why to me I find that I like that one piece. I haven't tried it both ways. This morning I re-wicked it. I thought of this way of doing it. Well, it's not a thought of the idea. I'm sure many other people have. I'm just saying I thought of just applying it to my deal. Tucking that down there like that. Because when I hold my mod, I'm holding my mod like this up to my mouth. So I thought, how cool would it be to have this little loop of wick 
feeding both coils at all times. This, this is about the where my mod, this is about the plane it's on when it's up to my mouth because I'm grabbing my mod like this. I don't know about you. Maybe you're one of those type of people that hold your mod straight up to your mouth and need your air holes like straight on sides of your center because you got this perfect grip. Not me, my hand's usually about like this. So that said, I put my coil so there, there. Now that little piece of wick that's down here is just there to just grab. And basically what I'm looking for is full coverage. Here, full coverage. See, I just off camera, secretly, tweak that piece of wick off of there. And there you go, right? Squawk, ready for the magic to happen? one hit to the body and you're already completely ready to vape i mean there's no like okay do you see that that's not even a three second squonk it might be i don't know but that's why when i saw that i reached out to p dib and said please send me three more of these p dib i'll pay any price man come on baby that's it now let's turn the camera around and have a vape off this puppy let's set up the afc Let's give him a little perfect timing for the dance effort dance too. Okay, let's pop this on. Oh, we gotta put this part goes on first. Actually you just put the whole thing in there. You just slide this in. Make sure you got it set up for the dual. See, I got it set up right now for single coil. See there's an air hole open on that side. No big deal. Just take this and you twist it over one. I'm going all in on my AFC. Let me turn the camera around and we'll take this puppy for a vape. All right, what did you think of that build? In my opinion, that was easy. I thought it was pretty easy. Um, again, I, anything I always find is when I've got the camera between us, me and whatever I'm building, makes it really, it, um, it um, exponentially makes it more difficult to build. But this is a finished product of our little build, the nothing. As you can see, it's considerably smaller than in profile and form. Height, even height is a little bit smaller than the other Addy I was using of choice. I like it a lot. What did you guys think of that squonking? Was that like off the chain or what? The squonk was definitely off the chain, in my personal opinion. What I'm going to do is, um, now that these lights are like this, I can see better. I'm just going to set that a little more. There we go, right on the coil. Perfect. Perfect. Did you get why I um, put that cotton in that back corner, right? Rolled it around and made it an entire, kind of like a Santa's beard. So I'm vaping this thing like this. I'm not. I haven't figured out yet how to hold my mod like exactly like this. Like maybe two-handed or something. Now your natural hand is sort of like that. So. Well, I think that that's a. Damn good, babe. You guys are so right. Let me show you what you guys have done to me now, if you don't mind. It's all a big joke, isn't it? My Uncle Russell having to get four new Addies. I'm happy to be a part of the joke. But, and I'll kid inside. All kidding aside, it's all it's fun, all fun and games till the freaking flying monkeys come in, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. It's burnt offerings, babies. Now, yeah, that's I mean, I have 
bunch of Addies that I will not be using. I really use these ones. These ones were gifts from my friend Rob to demo. I'm, not, I'm sure I'll break them out at future times, especially using if anyone has problems with the build or wants to see any type of build. Then I got an RM2. You can't have at least not one RM2 in your stash. But the Nuppin is going to be gracing all my mods for a while. I will keep definitely keep at least two of my Odins, at least two, because they're just, again, another just to be zombie proof. You just will never, ever, ever, ever know. I'm kind of hoping and thinking that maybe P.D.I.B. will come with another run of these Nuppins, too. I'm thinking that maybe they will. P.D.I.B. and Val Healy will decide that this Addy is worth making another batch of. People really like them. But P.D.I.B., I know, is rocking the mods. And I bet you there's, I know there's a lot more labor intensiveness in the mods, but it's something he controls. Whereas probably making these Addies is something he doesn't have that much control over and shipping and dealing with all this stuff. I don't know how he does it. I'd have to have me an assistant, someone to go get me a sandwich and make me an espresso and milk. Here I am in front of the camera again. I have a feeling that if I'm down here anytime in the very near future, you'll see like me, you'll see like a bedroom setting. Because I spent way too much time in this basement. shooting videos. I moved all my rebuilding stuff back upstairs so I don't even have to really come down here anymore. That way I used to be even to rebuild for a while now since I set up my photo studio, video studio here. I was coming down in the basement. I'm a little head to head. They both bait. I mean, I don't notice a huge difference in the vape. I'm giving the build ease to this one. It's easier to build. This one's easier to wick, though. And this one, how often do you rebuild an RBA? Let's face it, maybe once a month. I don't even build them that much, unless I'm making a movie. I don't. Probably every two months. But the squonk again on this one, the freaking squonk is just off the chain. I know for a fact that I will never... And I didn't hardly ever get juice out of this Addy, hardly ever get any juice out of it, almost rarely never, unless I grossly over -swung. But this one, I can, it's like, reminds me of a chalice, but five times better. So it drains like five times even quicker. There's like, I don't think there's any chance of obstructing that hole because your coil is not over that hole. Your wick's nowhere near. There's no chance of it developing like an airlock between your coil and the hole like a chalice was prone to, like I was accustomed to sometimes I'd get like a big old pool in there. I don't know how I'll ever make this one weak. I bet I could probably lay it on its side. So just seeing how beautifully it squonked, it immediately said I have to have that RBA. Two years of, um, a little over two years of vaping bottom fed mods. Two years of RBA in for sure. I started RBA February of 2012. I started rebuilding. This one blows every single one of them I've used out of the water and I've used pretty much only good ones. I've never had any crappy RBAs like in, a7 or any of that funky, spunky junk. So if my vape's as good as this one, and for flavor people, this one might be better. I don't know. Remember, I do unflavored. Smaller footprint, compact, more compact. So I can now. I'm not a big, I don't care much about sliding my door up. I never gave a damn. That was not a reason for me. But I can look now and see my little black line to know that, yeah, I've got me an 18... 650, 2200 in there, not a, not a 1600. Every now and then I like to know that. I couldn't do it without, I have to go down. But so you can, yes, slide your door up, all you door slider uppers. You can do it. And people using PDIB's mod have no worries about that. But it, it vapes awesome, it builds easy enough, it squonks like incredible. Wicks easier than any other Addy I've used too, because I like that, like that little, let's call it the infinity. Scarf, even though it's not. It's a squonker's wet dream. Long hitter's wet dream. Faber's wet dream. Peter Val Healy, thank you brothers for this killer product. Thanks to all you people for making me finally get one. 
and um, I'll be seeing you a long time from now. I won't be on camera. Unless it's like somebody filming me with all my stuff, moving it down into the basement, like my physical stuff. So y'all have a great night. Peace.